In Delhi, India, in the latter part of the 1980s, after serving as a spiritual master for nearly four decades, Charan Singh, who then had the largest following of any guru in the history of Radhaswami, was asked a personal question by one of his Western disciples in an afternoon meeting. What was the happiest moment of your life? To which Charan, appearing somewhat surprised by the query, replied, I cannot remember the happiest moment of my life. I can only remember the saddest day of my life. And that was when I was appointed to this position. Charan Singh never expected to be chosen as a spiritual master. In October of 1951, Jagat Singh, who was then the leader of Radhaswami Satsang Vyas, and on his deathbed, sent an urgent telegram to Charan to come immediately to the Dera. However, Charan arrived with his father only after Jagat Singh had died. Charan was completely shocked and mortified to learn that Jagat had appointed him to be his successor in his last will and testament. Charan Singh had no inkling that such a fate awaited him. Initially, Charan was so overcome with sadness at the prospect of being the Satguru Thadera that he contemplated running away, but he was prevented from doing so by the ardent pleas of his family and the thousands of satsangis that wanted him to accept the Gaudi. Charan himself wrote on October 24, 1951, after just hearing the news of being named Jagat Singh's successor, As I am feeling now, facing people with folded hands, eyes full with tears and sorrow, when I compare my shortcomings with their faith, devotion, and respect, my mind ceases to think, and I am living as if there is no other alternative. Later, Charan Singh would occasionally refer to this as his execution day. On his Dastrabandi day, which is where the Guru is formally installed in front of the entire Sangha, Charan explained further why he felt so troubled in accepting such an exalted status and role. My love for Huzur Maharaji, the commands of Siddhar Bahadur Maharaji, and the affection of the Sangha compel me to serve the Sangha and the Dera. But when I look at myself and my shortcomings, I feel diffident and find myself unable to decide whether I'm really fit for these onerous duties. I wish to tell the Sangha quite frankly that I do not make any claims whatsoever to spiritual attainments. I do not find in myself even those excellences that a good satsangi should possess. I do not consider myself worthy of putting on the turban of such great saints. But compelled by the Sangha's love and faith in Huzur Maharaji, I have submitted myself to the Sangha, and the Sangha can do as they see fit. The vast gathering were deeply moved by Charan's words, given as they were so freely and openly from his heart. Over the next four decades, Charan Singh drew a huge gathering all over India and from different countries around the world, eventually initiating over 1,200,000 people into the practice of Surat Shabad Yoga. Although Charan consistently and unequivocally disavowed himself from any spiritual attainments, it became obvious to all those who saw him that Charan was on a most difficult path, one which was different than most. Charan was following the way of absolute submission to the commands of his own guru and grandfather, Sawan Singh, even though Charan himself had no desire whatsoever to be a guru at all. As Charan stated on different occasions, if it were up to me, I wouldn't stay at this stage for a second. But such was his devotion that Charn was fully committed to obeying the directives of his predecessors. As Charn reflected, in spite of me, I am still breathing in his service. During his tenure, Charn expanded the Dara colony, creating a large and self-sustaining township. He also made certain that the Dara developed and enlarged its langar which could feed hundreds of thousands of visitors for free on a single day. Charan also established a massive medical eye camp each year where thousands of patients were freely treated for cataracts and other ailments. In addition, he created a large general hospital which treated anyone regardless of cost. When he was complimented for providing such facilities, Charan commented that he felt fortunate that he could be of such service and that he was blessed to be able to serve in such a way. Despite being so successful in his ministry, Charan Singh never regarded himself as a master per se, but only someone who was trying his best to follow the instructions left to him by both Jagat Singh and Sawan Singh. In this regard, he remarked that he always shook in his boots when he woke up each morning, knowing fully well the tremendous responsibility that was before him. 
he never felt that he deserved the honorifics that were bestowed on him from thousands who held him in the very highest regard. As Charan himself emphasized from the beginning of his appointment at a satsang in November of 1951, let me serve the Sangat as their younger brother. I earnestly request every satsangi not to address me as Maharaji, as such titles suit only royal personalities, like my illustrious predecessors. I feel that I am like a stone idol in a temple. According to their notions of love, some bathe it in cold water, some with hot water, and some deck it in fine clothes, but is still an idol all the same. Charan's path was one of complete surrender. As he frankly admitted in a letter in early November of 1951 to a close friend, I had no alternative left but to accept this heavy responsibility. You can well imagine how hard it will be to carry it out. I have entirely submitted to him, his will, and will face whatever he has in store for me.